Hi friend, welcome. Well, today we are wrapping up Ruth chapter four. These are the last few verses. And really it's the last few verses of the whole book of Ruth. Looking forward to this. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we praise you. We praise you for this book of Ruth. We praise you for all that you are teaching us about yourself. Lord, we praise you that you are our restore, nourisher, redeemer. We praise you for all of these things that we are learning about you and how we can see your steadfast love throughout the generations, Lord. Be with us now. Redeem this time as we are in your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so let's go ahead and read. This is starting at verse 18. Now, these are the generations of Perez. Perez fathered Hezron. Hezron fathered Ram. Ram fathered Aminadab. Aminadab fathered Nashon. Nashon fathered Salmon. Salmon fathered Boaz. Boaz fathered Obed. Obed fathered Jesse. And Jesse fathered David. Okay, so friends, what do we have? <laughs> you know, what do we observe? What do we notice? A bunch of names, right? And I said, this is a list. Uh, uh, this is a list. This is a genealogy. And I did look up that word generations. That's the word I put in my keyword column. Generations is a genealogy. It is an account, uh, a genealogical record or account of successive generations. And this one begins begins with Perez, who was introduced in this chapter yesterday, right? We talked about this. Perez was the son of Tamar, who was also a widow, who took extreme measures with her father-in-law in order to give birth to a redeemer. And her father-in-law was Judah, and that is important too. Judah was a son, and I think we touched on this yesterday, was a son of Jacob. Uh, his, 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 uh, yeah, so he was the son of Jacob. Jacob had these 12 sons through Rachel and Leah, whom we talked about yesterday, and uh, his name is Israel. So these 12 sons become the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, I, one thing that I wanted to just go back and look up, because in my mind, and some of you may be similar, like I know that Judah is the royal line of these 12 12 sons, that Judah is the royal line. But when we're doing Bible study, when we're doing inductive Bible study, it's really good to try to let this go. <laughs> Any information that we think we know, just try to let it go and look at it with fresh eyes. So I'm, I tried to do that today and I wanted to be curious and find out more about the blessing that Israel or Jacob gave his son Judah. So I went back to Genesis chapter 49 and here's Israel's blessing or piece of it to Judah. Judah, your brother shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons shall bow down before you. And a few verses down, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. So there was uh, this blessing to Judah that this would be the royal line, all right? So it's way back in Genesis that this blessing uh, to Judah is given. And we can say, yes, he is a part of the royal line. Now, what's also interesting is that these this this very same genealogy these same verses are found in Matthew chapter 1 as a portion of Christ's genealogy so that we can see how king david was this king and christ uh, you know there were more generations following him and jesus christ comes from the same line all right, another idea about this genealogy, and yes, did you know genealogies can be fascinating? I mean, for years, I just read through these sections as fast as I could, uh, but 
what is special too, did you notice how many are listed, how many generations are listed here? There are 10, and you can double check me on that. And, you know, I've read in a number of places, I don't quite understand it, but there are times and when genealogy is listed, that generations will be skipped, all right? It's as if the word fathered can mean fathered an ancestor, not just fathered a son, all right? So a lot of times, just 10 generations will be listed with the seventh and the 10th place being highlighted. Uh, these are showcase positions, if you will. So the seventh here, guess who? Boaz. And the tenth, guess who? It's King David. It's King David. So this is obviously highlighting that you know, God's faithfulness to Ruth. She is a part of this royal uh, line, these, these generations of, uh, that, that lead up to King David. And she helped establish the house of the king, right? And we just see, don't we see God's steadfast love and faithfulness to Ruth? I mean, this was a question that I asked in my observe column. Like, why? Why is this genealogy important? Why does it end here? And I think it is this, that God's faithfulness to Ruth, I mean, it just, it, it, this solidifies it. This genealogy solidifies it. It's kind of a backwards look to Ruth and see how God was faithful to her uh, through Boaz and, and Obed. And then I think, friends, too, in a way, this account, it, it, it's just an account to all of us. Here's my application, I guess, if you will, of God's steadfast love throughout the generations. Uh, his steadfast love and faithfulness, it just reigns. It reigns throughout the generations. And he, let me grab my Bible here. He says this, I probably know this verse by, by uh, memory, but I don't want to botch it up either. This is the God that, that, uh, he introduced himself to as Moses. When he revealed himself to Moses, he's going to give Moses the Ten Commandments. Moses wants to see him and he passes by. And he says this in Exodus 34, verse 6. He says, the Lord, uh, uh, he, let me see, let me, let me uh, find it here. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, for thousands of generations. This is how God introduced himself to Moses. And this is exactly what the author is showing us today. Uh, God's steadfast love throughout the generations. Oh, friends, can you see it? Can you see it in your own life as well? This gives us something to ponder, to praise God for today. And really, I think a, another application is just to rest in Him, right? Uh, I find comfort. I find rest. I find this place of settled security in knowing that God reigns throughout the generations, that he is building his house. He is doing his good kingdom building work. All right, I hope we all can rest in that. I'll look forward to wrapping up Genesis chapter 4 with you tomorrow. Thanks for being on this journey.